Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and I'm going to be making a couple different versions of macaroni and cheese. So this is a special, special episode of Kenji's cooking show. That's my cooking show, um, because I'm going to be making uh, two different recipes for macaroni and cheese. One of them is my own, my three ingredient macaroni and cheese. That's the one I'm starting here, and the other one is uh, Deb Perlman's. So Deb and I are starting a new podcast together called The Recipe. Uh, and in this podcast, um, we talk about recipes. Uh, so in each episode, we talk about one of our existing recipes. Um, in this case, the very first episode is going to be about macaroni and cheese. Um, we talk about the recipe development process, how we came up with these recipes, what we tested, what our goals were. Um, and the idea is that Deb Perlman um, who's been doing this, you know, writing recipes online since 2006. Uh, the blog, her blog is Smitten Kitchen. Uh, you've probably heard of it. It's one of the most popular and long lasting food blogs out there. Uh, she's been writing recipes since 2006. Uh, and I've been writing recipes for about the same amount of time, uh, both online and in magazines. Um, so both of us have about, you know, close to getting getting on close to 20 years of experience, certainly together over 30 years of experience writing recipes for uh, home cooks. Um, and yet, we have very different approaches to it. Uh, and um, so, you know, it's interesting that two people who have sort of the same goals in mind, writing recipes that work for home cooks, uh, can work on the exact same recipe, in this case, in this case macaroni and cheese, uh, and come up with two very different recipes in the end. Um, so the podcast is about how... Uh, we arrive at those recipes uh, with the idea that hopefully by understanding how we arrive at these recipes, you as a home cook can then decide, well, whether you want to make my recipe or her recipe, or maybe mine one day and hers another day, or um, what you can do to make the recipes your own and how to sort of develop your own uh, you know, perfect recipes. Anyhow, um, so I'm going to show you two different ways to make macaroni and cheese really quickly and easily. Both of these are very, very simple recipes. Uh, mine takes about 10 minutes. It has only three ingredients. Uh, that's six ounces of pasta. So this is for two servings, by the way, two, ser two sort of smallish servings. You can, you can always scale this up or down, but this is two servings of uh, six ounces of macaroni. Um, in this case, it's actually celentini, but any kind of sort of short tubular pasta will work. Six ounces, six ounces of grated cheese. I'm using cheddar. You could use something else like Gruyere or Swiss or American or whatever you want. And six ounces of evaporated milk. Uh, it's important that it's evaporated milk, not uh, condensed milk. So condensed milk is generally sweetened and we're looking for unsweetened evaporated milk here. It comes in a can. Um, so not as much salt as I normally would add to pasta water here, just a small amount of salt because uh, what we're going to do is, you, well, what you can see I've already done is I put the pasta uh, in a skillet, I covered it with cold water, um, just barely covered it with cold water, now I'm putting it on the heat and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Um, the idea here is that as the pasta cooks, that water is going to completely reduce, so we're not going to drain this pasta at all. Um, so all of the starch that comes out of the pasta is going to stay in that water and reduce until we have a sort of almost like a fine slurry of uh, pasta starch and water. And that's the secret here. That's what's going to help our cheese sauce emulsify without breaking. So I'm just going to let this come to a boil. I'm going to let, the, let it boil until the water has completely boiled off and the pasta is cooked. Um, and that should take about, you know, for this type of pasta, probably seven or eight minutes. For an elbow macaroni, something like that, probably about around six minutes or so. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to finish off Deb's pasta. Um, so I'm going to transfer this over here to a burner. I'll let that go. Um, so in the meantime, for Deb's pasta, I've already got four ounces of macaroni that I've uh, pre-cooked. I already boiled it in salted water and drained it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use that same pot that I cooked the pasta in. It doesn't have to be the same pot. I'm just going to use the same pot. And I'm going to add a couple teaspoons of butter. Uh, so that was four ounces of pasta, by the way. So 120 grams if you're, uh, you know, if you're using proper units. Four ounces of pasta, um, two teaspoons of butter, and two teaspoons of flour. That's about 10 grams of 10 grams of butter and uh, about 10 grams of butter and six grams of flour. All right, now, so basically what we're gonna do is make a, um, a bechamel here. So that's a, a mixture of milk. Well, it's milk thickened with a mixture of flour and butter. In fact, what we're really making is what's called a Mornay sauce, which is a bechamel that has had uh, cheese 
added to it. All right, so we've got two teaspoons of, of butter, two, te two teaspoons of flour. We cooked it just until the uh, just until the flour no longer smells raw. So just a couple of moments. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my milk all at once. This is a, a half cup of milk. So about 120 milliliters, and then we're going to whisk it, whisk it, whisk it, whisk it until those lumps disappear. And if uh, I believe, you know, Deb's recipe, I think it actually tells you to add, you know, do, does it the more traditional way, which is adding milk a couple teaspoons at a time, a very little bit, of a, bit at a time, uh, and whisking carefully in between each addition uh, until you get a really smooth sauce. That way works, but dumping cold milk all at once into hot roux also works. Anybody who watches Chef John's channel knows that already. Um, the reason is because um, the, the problem is if you add hot milk, uh, what can happen is that the little lumps of sort of the butter and flour mixture can start to cook on the outside and set up on the outside, which then forms this kind of gel uh, that prevents the milk from getting to the inside, and so you end up with lumps. However, if you add cold milk and whisk immediately, it's very easy to break up those uh, lumps before they've had a chance to actually cook and gelatinize. Um, and so you end up with a very smooth sauce. As long as your milk is cold and your roux is hot, uh, you will end up with a smooth, smooth bechamel, just like this one. Okay, so now, very simple, we're going to season this. Pinch of salt. Plenty of grinds of black pepper. So Deb's recipe, she calls for Parmesan cheese and black pepper. So the flavor ends up being, to me, almost like a, um, like a cacio e pepe, you know, but with a sort of creamier texture of an American mac and cheese or a British style mac and cheese, I suppose. So our Parmesan is going in and off heat. We're going to now whisk this until it forms a creamy sauce. Okay. And then very simply, stir in our pasta. And if it starts to look a little bit thick like that, you can always thin it out with just a little splash of milk. Until it gets about as creamy as you want it. What you don't want to do after you've added that cheese is really expose this to very high heat. Although, you know, once you've made that Mornay sauce, it can be boiled and, and the cheese probably won't curdle, but you don't really want to risk it too much. So, once you've added the cheese, try and keep it uh, either off heat or at the very least, um, you know, low heat. All right, so that, whew, this one is Deb Perlman's Smitten Kitchens Easy, I think she calls it her Easy Essential Stovetop Mac and Cheese. It takes one pot, the time it takes to boil pasta plus, you know, what you just saw, plus a couple minutes, and it comes out looking like, whew, Hmm, creamy and delicious. You know, it has that intense uh, Parmesan flavor and the black black pepper flavor of a good uh, cacio e pepe. And yet it's super nice and creamy. All right, in the meantime, my pasta is just shy of al dente. By the time that water has boiled off, the pasta should be perfectly cooked. In the meantime, I want to come up and show you what this one looks like. Gorgeous, right? Creamy, oozy, gooey, peppery, cheesy. Hmm. How's that look? I think it could use just a touch more salt for me. Touch more salt, touch more pepper. Deb has told me that um, she also likes making this 
particular recipe with a mix of Parmesan uh, and white cheddar, like a, a really sharp white cheddar, which I think could be delicious. It's a pretty flexible recipe, you know? All right, we're very, very close. Um, so there are other recipes that are sort of similar to this uh, three ingredient mac and cheese. Um, by the way, the reason, the, the way I came up with this recipe was that um, I was initially, um, I had recently made a recipe for um, cacio e pepe. And, you know, cacio e pepe is one of those Roman pasta dishes that relies on the starchiness of pasta water to emulsify uh, cheese into it. So similar to Deb's mac and cheese, but without the roux, um, without the butter and uh, um, flour added to it. Instead, you just rely on the starchiness of the pasta itself uh, to emulsify your sauce. <clears throat> um, and so I was thinking, well, if we're relying on the starchiness of pasta water to work for this really um, hard cheese, you know, something like a Pecorino Romano um, or a Parmesan, and you're relying on the, uh, the starch to emulsify that cheese that's very difficult to emulsify, difficult, difficult to melt, um, I wonder if that would work for an American style macaroni and cheese, which uses um, cheeses that are typically easier to melt, so things like cheddar or American, Granted, it uses a much higher quantity of those cheeses, but uh, those cheeses are typically easier to melt. So, you know, I tried it using the exact same method I would do my cacio e pepe. Um, it didn't quite work. There's too much cheese. There's not enough emulsifying power in that starchy pasta water uh, to melt all that cheese and get it to stay emulsified. Um, so instead, what I did was kept the really starchy pasta water, but I'm also going to add some of this, which is uh, evaporated milk. Um, evaporated milk is milk basically that has had about half of its water content removed from it. Uh, so it has a higher concentration of protein, uh, higher concentration of milk proteins, higher concentration of milk sugars, higher concentration of fat as well. Um, but really the important part is those extra concentrated proteins. Um, so the, pr uh, the milk proteins are, act as an emulsifier in these sauces. Um, they, are, they act as sort of a bridge between uh, fats and water. Uh, and they help prevent the cheese from, the fat and the cheese from breaking out and separating. Um, and so when you add this extra concentrated milk protein, uh, it makes the sauce really nice and creamy. Uh, and it does it with just the help of the pasta water, the milk proteins in here, and the cheese. So just three ingredients uh, and you're done. All right, so basically dry here. You can see there's not much water left and what water is left is kind of, it's almost like a gel, you know, it's like a kind of fluid gel here. That's what we're looking for. So at this point, I'm going to add in my evaporated milk. Let that come to a simmer. Get my bowl ready because this is almost done. I've done, a, I've done another video on this recipe already, by the way. Oh, and if you want this recipe, you can find this recipe. It's completely free uh, on SeriousEats.com. Uh, and if you want Deb's recipe, you can find it on SmittenKitchen.com, also completely free. I will uh, link to both of these recipes. Um, and I will also link to the first episode of our new podcast. Um, I find the podcast to be extremely fun. Uh, Deb is a joy to talk to. Um, we met for the first time last year when she came to Seattle as part of her book tour um, for her book, Smitten Kitchen Keepers. Um, I hosted her here at an event in Town Hall. We uh, went up on the stage. Uh, it was the first time we'd ever really met in person. You know, obviously we'd been sort of aware of each other's work for many years um, because we've been contemporaries, but um, it was the first time we'd ever met in person and first time we'd ever talked in person. And it turns out we get along really well. Um, we, we sat up on stage and talked for, I don't remember, an hour and a half. We went over time uh, and they had to kind of, you know, use, the, use the, 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 the giant hook to pull us off the stage because we were just there talking about recipes. Um, and uh, yeah, so it turns out when Deb and I get together, we can talk about recipes. We can talk shop for a long time. Um, and I find it very fun and hopefully the, the listeners will find it fun as well. All right, so we're gonna let this simmer just for, you know, like a minute. Make sure it's all nice and piping hot. And then I'm gonna add in my cheese. So that was six ounces of pasta, six ounces of evaporated milk, six ounces of cheese. And that's it. I'm just gonna stir this right in. And this is the kind of macaroni cheese, you know, it takes less time than, uh, it takes less time than the, uh, than like a box of craft does. You know, or I guess about the same amount of time because it's just the amount of time it takes to boil pasta. Um, and it actually has fewer ingredients. There are fewer things you have to add to this um, than uh, when you make a box of Kraft Mac and Cheese. 
you know, when, uh, whatever you call, whatever they call it, craft dinner in Canada, I guess. Okay. I got gooey, gooey, glossy, cheesy. Mm. Just a tiny touch of salt. Alrighty. Alright. So here we have them. This is Deb's Essential Stovetop Mac and Cheese made with Parmesan and a bechamel. Pretty classic. And this is my gooey three ingredient stovetop mac and cheese. Those are the two mac and cheeses. Deb Perlman's on the right, or Deb Perlman's on your left, I guess my right, and uh, mine on your right, my left. Is that right? <laughs> this one is mine, this one is Deb's. Um, both very different recipes, both very easy, both very delicious. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to tune in, the first episode of the podcast drops the day this video does. That's today, Monday, February 26, 2024. Uh, so you can tune in and listen to us talk about um, how we came up with these recipes. Uh, and of course, we also talk about all the things that happen uh, with mac and cheese, why cheese sauces emulsify, why they might break the prep, you know, the pitfalls of mac and cheese, uh, the the joys of mac and cheese. It's a fun episode. Um, I think you'll like it. Uh, if you like it, please tune in, uh, subscribe, and listen to it regularly. Uh, all the links for the recipes and the podcast are below. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I'm very excited about this new podcast, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. All right. See you later.